19.64 years old on draft night, listed at 6'6", 235, played 24 and a half minutes per game this year, averaged 16.3 points per game, 5.4 rebounds, 1.2 assists, two turnovers, a half a steal, uh, 0.4 blocks, shot it at a 48% clip, 40 and a half percent from deep, 83% from the line, a uh, true shooting percentage of 58.7, PER of 26.4, and a box score plus minus of 8.6. Uh, we're going to we're going to start with some some shooting and I think if you you mentioned Sensaba, mm-hmm. the first thing that you're going to talk about with the shooting is like mid-range killer, right? Like that's that's kind of the thing that you know, everybody brings up discusses with him. And, and, uh, you know, I think that that is for, for good reason, because his touch from, from that area, you know, it's, it's pretty insane. Right. Um, you know, it's, this is a guy who, uh, when you look at that pull up ability, it, it sure gets my mind going towards looks like some NBA shot making. And this is early in the year in the Maui invitational, but little combo move. And, and people talk about, Sometimes Bryce doesn't always get, you know, a ton of of space uh, with his, you know, his, his shots. But that is not the case here as he, you know, busts out a little ISO combo from the top of the key and crosses the defender out of his shoes and knocks down a little mid-range jumper. Corey, I'd like to ask you a question. And I thought about this for a long time. And Bryce haters are going to hate that I'm asking this question. But I want to ask okay. you this question because this is, I, I can't shake it. And... Honestly, even me asking you this question kind of skews my overall ranking of him. Um, when you did your eval for mm-hmm. Devin, Devin Booker, mm-hmm. and if, if we look at Bryce Sensabaugh and we break him down, um, not an elite athlete, doesn't have like the quickest first step. Um, obviously, the, det- the detractors are going to talk about his um, quote unquote stocky build like we've talked about. But um, for whatever reason, Bryce Sensabaugh gets his shot off like all the time. Um, He's an absolute maestro magician in the mid range. Um, Once again, he doesn't have elite for like quickness, but he has a tight enough handle. He uses his physique well, and he gets off these types of shots all the time. And he has that type of touch in the mid range. So for me, Corey, it's hard to shake that and to think, okay, so my evaluation of Bryce sets the ball. Like I get it defensively. He's not going to be your number one option. He's not going to be your, you know, lockdown point of attack defender. But if he can, like you said about Booker, if he can compete and be a guy that, you know, you're not like always freaking out about on the defensive side of the ball, then it's hard to shake this idea of Bryce sense about not being an awesome player. So I, I, I apologize. I know you just want to talk about the shooting, but like, as you were talking about the shooting and you played that clip, I'm like, Dude, that move that you you were highlighting, you're showing over and over again, like that's an NBA move. And he has that type of fluidity and that type of presence in the mid range and the ability to get off his shot. So from just kind of starting off in the mid range, like, yeah, he has an NBA ready mid range game. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, funny that you brought up Devin Booker there. Um, now, I, I did write about Bryce earlier in the year and Devin Booker was one of the guys I, I kind of comped him to. Uh, but I, I think that we'll see. This is going to look pretty similar if you're following along at home, just coming off a, a little high ball screen and punishing drop coverage. Um, first, it was Devin Booker getting it done. And, you know, now Sensaba is going to come off the screen, get right to the nail. Defender can't get over in time. Knockdown. Tough. 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 Yeah. And, and you know, look, the, the mid-range is only – dead for guys that aren't great at it (laughs) (laughs) the guys who can't hit it yeah exactly so you know like this is a guy who feels really comfortable in in these scenarios and it's because he's so so skilled now you know here we are using that big frame yeah bully. now now what he's doing here is he's getting the ball on the block uh we're a little bit in the short porch outside of it on the logo backs down Nice and patient. And he gets his spot. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the patience, the the power, the mentality even to kind of get to that spot is unbelievable. And I, I just, 
kind of going back to what you said, like, okay, you're about to highlight DeRozan, aren't you? Of course you are. And this is, look, this is an NBA move, man. Like, the footwork is unbelievable. Like, there's nothing too flashy and amazing. And, Corey, a point that I wanted to make before that I, I think resonates here, too. People talk about, like, gravity in terms of, like, outside shooting, right? And when you talk about gravity as an outside shooter, people think of, three-point shooting exclusively and I I don't think that's it at all if you watch the playoffs right now what you highlighted before with that Booker play you know a lot of teams will play drop coverage and in drop coverage if the big is sagging that much and you have an open mid-range shot like that and you have an assassin like Devin Booker or DeMar DeRozan or whoever or Jalen Brunson that can hit that shot consistently well then suddenly that drop that drop coverage isn't so good anymore and that big is going to have to hard hedge. He's going to have to show. And that leads to different advantages for the driver than to exploit that all the way to the rim or draw fouls or whatever, or start to bend the defense in a different way. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in the outside shot being just a three-point shot that once again, we discredit that mid-range shot. And even here, the highlight that you're showing right now, like this is such a bully move from Bryce and his ability to use his size, his his physique, which I guess we're using it in a different way this time <laughs> than we usually do. But I mean, that that space creation, spot creation that you're talking about is so effective for him. And I just don't see how that doesn't translate to the NBA because it's not like he's doing this exclusively against like small, tinier guys. He could do this against almost anybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm right there with you, man. And, um, you know, uh, spoiler alert for, you know, the audience. Um, who have you bought stock in previously? For me, don't don't really need to uh, do that segment later because I'm doing yeah. it now. I, I, to me, he is DeRozan with a modern twist mm. uh, because ultimately, and this is you know, it's almost a carbon copy of of the play we just saw from the fact that you know Bryce and Demar are both going to that same exact spot, turning their body their, their back, and just using their size, their skill to get off. A clean, clean look. Now, it, the the reason that um, you know I think some fans get frustrated with DeRozan, right, is because this that's DeRozan's bread and butter. That is his sweet spot. That's what he feels comfortable with. But you know, Bryce is a, a guy that he has more. He, he shot forty one percent from three. Uh -huh on 11 three-point attempts per 100 possessions. You know, so it's not even like he wasn't doing it on volume. Mm -hmm. I mean, filthy. You know, like just, you, he's, and we, and I look at all the, the ways he'll be used in, in a different context. Mm -hmm. Little little ball screen here. He's on a big, can't stay in front of him. Because I think Bryce, because of his size, because of his girth, because of that stocky build, he's he's going to be playing up and uh, a, a little bit, and and you're not gonna and if you switch here, nasty. he's gonna punish that. He's so gonna punish nasty. that. Like he's that good of a scorer, and, and look, and you're showing another Booker thing here, and that's the, the thing with Bryce is, is that. I love what you said about him being a DeRozan with a modern twist or him. You showing the Booker stuff here right now as well as because he is such a goddamn good shooter off the catch. Um, and, and he's, he really is good off the dribble as well. He's an unbelievable shooter. And I think, we do this pod every single week, Corey, and we generally bring up a lot of the same talking points when it comes to what NBA teams are looking for. And when you're that good of a scorer and you can shoot it that well from outside, both off the catch and with the ball in your hands off the dribble, that's special stuff. And that's stuff that uh, honestly I, isn't really apples for apples when you're comparing skills to skills. It, it, it truly is an elite skill that he has. And I think NBA teams are going to feel exactly the same, in my opinion. Yeah, I, and you know the the conversations that I've had with people, uh, you know, that are in the NBA. I think you know, I, I, I mean, look, I think people are in or out on Bryce typically, but I, I think there are some smart organizations that I've spoken to that I, I think think he's really skilled. So you know, I think a, a lot of it will come back maybe to one how much they believe he has it in him to get in better shape, and then and then the knee. Um, because I do think, you know, the him getting into elite shape and that's part of the bet that I would take on him in that like five to six range. Part of the bet is that, OK, if this dude gets into that much better shape, he he jumps a level, uh, uh, you know, and, and that's a, a dangerous player. Now, you know, we showed that Booker clip before coming off the screen and, you know, we have a, a big here. This is very similar kind of somewhat 
guarding at the level, but yeah. but playing off a little bit. And like with a shooter like Sensaba or Devin Booker, you can't really do that. You have to commit one way or the other. And that that defender, just like Cat was, is stuck in no man's land. But then I think, uh, and, and I want to go back to Devin Booker for a minute, you can run him off of little actions like this where he can come off movement. And this is yeah. that kind of like Kentucky Booker you know, that we were talking about earlier where he's, you know, coming off screens and playing off of, of Chris Paul and doesn't necessarily need the ball in his hands to thrive. And I think Bryce has that in his game too. Like this is a guy, you know, who you could use setting screens and running all over the floor and just run him to the wing, catch and shoot. He's going to be a threat as a shooter from everywhere. Yeah, and ultimately, because he's such a good shooter, you do have to play oh, up yeah. on him. You can't give him that room, and you, you have to kind of respect it. And as far as the finishing and, and how it, how he could use his body, I think this is a good example of how you do that, right? And this is DeMar DeRozan, the full-fledged version on the Bulls, who's this, you know, unbelievable finisher and mid-range shooter and scorer and has, you know, been in the league for a million years now. And he's, you know, using this crafty kind of finish where he's going to go into Malcolm Brogdon's chest, and then he's going to finish... Um, with his offhand and with the extension. And we see that here. You know, we this is something that that we see here. Using his body to shield the defender from making a play on the ball. So look, does he need to get better at finishing? Certainly. But when I'm looking at certain flashes um for him, and I I see things like this in his bag. And I go, all right, he, he already has the frame, but he needs to get it into better shape. And if he if he just slims down a little bit, he's still going to be a big, strong dude. You know, he's not going to all of a sudden look like Chet Holmgren because he loses a little bit of weight, right? That's not the kind of frame that he has. He's always going to be strong. So he just needs to get better at this. And sometimes when we're watching these guys, especially when we're, we're watching them compared to their NBA counterparts that we're comparing them to, we look at the full fledged, fully formed, fully evolved Pokemon version of the NBA player versus the college prospect of the guys that we're breaking down. And when we do that, we're not being fair to them. And, but when I see the glimpses of it, I can project, all right, well, six years down the line, maybe this is something he goes to regularly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 